Hey everyone, it's Christina from Hourwood Home. Today I'm going to be showing you what's inside my homemaking binder, and I'll also have a blog post linked in the description of this video where I talk a bit more about why I made this binder and what purpose it serves. So to begin, this is what it looks like. It's just a regular plain three ring binder. I have tabs for each section. I don't know how well that'll show up. Um, let me try to hold it up. So I've got colored tabs here for each section. And I'll tell you what sections I have, um, just in case you want some ideas for your own binder. And keep in mind, this is very specific to me, so the things that I have in here might not apply to you. I have a section for cleaning schedules, which is something I don't use anymore. But when I was trying to establish a dedicated cleaning schedule, or routine, I guess, um, I would print out a form for each week and fill in each day's tasks. But I found that it was just getting to be a lot of paperwork, so I just wrote one master list and put that on the fridge. But I think I'll still keep this cleaning tab in here because I can use it for um, like seasonal tasks that I want to keep track of. I also have a section for food storage. I'll be talking about this in another video, but we're currently trying to build up some food stores in our house. So I wrote down um, everything that I'm going to buy to build up that store in 2022. I have been wanting to write down all my preserved goods as well and keep that in here, but I just haven't gotten around to it yet. I have a section for to-do projects, which is where I keep track of any upgrades I want to do or organizational things that I want to get done. I find it easier to have a paper copy instead of keeping just a record on my phone. The next section is a gift list section. So throughout the year, my husband and I will think of something that we know a family member would like and we'll say, oh, we should get that for so-and-so's birthday. But then when their birthday comes around, we can't remember what we had talked about getting for them. So whenever we have those conversations throughout the year, I'll write it down in my binder. And then as we approach that gift giving occasion, I'm able to check and see if we already had some ideas. Similarly, I have a Christmas list section and I keep track of the gifts we'd like to buy for family, as well as um, my Christmas baking list, who we give cards to, and if I'm planning any meals for the holidays, I'll write them in here, noting what I want to make and when. I also have a garden planning section, which is probably my most used section. In the spring, I'll draw a diagram of all the gardens we have and what I'd like to plant in each one. Here are the last couple years. I know it looks like a mess, but I can make sense of it and that's what's important. So I write down, as I said, everything I want to plant. And then I also have a list. Um, I didn't do one for 2021. Oh yes, I did. So I have a list from spring 2020 where I wrote down everything that I had planted, if it germinated, and then where I ended up planting it in the yard. And this was really helpful um, to figure out if there's any pattern for things that aren't germinating and why that might be happening. For example, um, in 2020, I had no yellow pole beans germinate, even though I planted several. I don't know why that happened. Maybe the seeds were just too old. But this past spring, I did have some that germinated and were transplanted outside. So it takes some figuring out, but that's why I have lists, so I can look back on this information. I'm also going to be writing down all the things I want to plant for this coming year and anything that we're going to be testing out, some new things that we haven't grown before. And um, yeah, that's it for the gardening section. I also have a section for fermenting and pickling. I've done some pickling before and 
I used a few different recipes, but they're all online, and I don't like to have just online recipes. I'd rather have a hard copy as well in case that online source is no longer available. So I wrote down um, some fermented sauerkraut that I had tried, fermented dill pickles, regular pickled cucumbers, pickled beets, wild leeks, that kind of stuff. And I also make notes about the final product. So for example, with the fermented sauerkraut, my husband tried it after two weeks and said it would tasted good, but it could ferment a little bit more or a little bit less. And I didn't add any extra seasonings to it. It was just what the recipe called for, which was cabbage and salt and water. And then for the fermented dill pickles, um, we did not care for either for that recipe. Neither of us did. And the pickled cucumbers had mixed results. I also wrote down which method I use for canning my tomatoes because there's a lot of conflicting information out there that says what's safe and what isn't safe. So I found some trusted sources online and wrote that information into my binder so I always have it. I also have this little notebook that has my sourdough notes in it. So I made my first sourdough starter in April 2020 and I wanted to write down how I keep it alive as well as some observations about it. And I find this is really kind of neat to see, to, come, to notice how far I've come in the sourdough making process. I was keeping this somewhere else in the kitchen, but I thought it makes the most sense to keep it in here. This binder has um, pockets at the front and the back, so that's really helpful. I, in the front pocket, I just have some Christmas baking recipes that I sent to my brother. And I have some loose scraps of paper with some random recipes that I have been creating and testing. I want to make note of what exactly I do as well as how it turns out. So this recipe was for doggy gingerbread cookies and they ended up being pretty dry and crumbly so I think I overbaked them but it's good to have these original notes so that I can make any adjustments for next year or whenever I make them again. I also have this cool little sticker it came in, um, what did it come in? It was on the back of some canning jar labels. So it just has all the different quantities of jars in milliliters because I'm in Canada. In the back of the binder, I have some more recipes. I have a recipe that we would use to make cheese. And we actually bought a cheese making kit, which was kind of a letdown, but I still have the booklet that it came with. And I have some spare graph paper for writing down my garden plans, and that's it. So as I said, I will be linking a blog post where I talk a bit more about having a homemaking binder. I don't necessarily think it's something everyone has to do, but it is very helpful for me. I've seen homemaking binders called uh, homemakers planners or something like that, and I wouldn't consider this a planner because I don't do any daily scheduling or really any scheduling in here, but I know that's a term that's thrown around, so if you see the term planner, just know somebody might just be talking about a regular old organized binder like I have here. I invite you to check out the blog post that will be linked and if you have any questions about my homemaking binder or what's in it or how to get started making one, feel free to ask that in the comments here or on my blog post or through email which is mentioned on my blog in various places. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you have a great rest of your day. Mm -hmm.